The spinster wants a house. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein because I've forgotten mine. We're going to have a look at this article from SBS discussing a lady who expects expects it all. And uh, yeah, I, I think reality has to, uh, people need to wake up to reality. Honestly, uh, I think the sex in the city has done a lot of damage to a lot of people. It's given them the wrong idea. And now we've got this apparently this expectation that people can do it all by themselves, can get a house, everything. Well, okay, sure. The people that get a house by themselves usually make a lot of sacrifices, usually buy a lot cheaper, usually start a lot younger. Or they live at home with their parents and work three Macca's jobs. So let's look at this one. Jess is single and wants to buy a home. Her mortgage broker told her she can't have it all. It's probably the first time someone dared to say that to her. Because, I mean, that's just the reality of everyone in life. You generally can't have it all. You've got to compromise and well, plan things out. So, data shows you need to be earning more than 250000 a year to afford the median Sydney house. So, is ownership out of reach for single people? Yes. Yeah, it is. You need two incomes now to buy a house. That's because houses are purchased based on household income. Now we've got this wonderful world where everyone is encouraged, is encouraged to work. Even mothers of children are encouraged to go to work. If you really add up all the time, the bullshit, uh, the childcare costs, the packed lunches, the extra petrol, sometimes it's not worth both people working, but oh, they're working for like bugger all over the year, a couple of grand, maybe 10 grand over the year extra after all the costs, depending on how much you're earning. It's just, it's stupid. But anyway, you know, so she finds the prospect of buying a home on a single income absolutely terrifying. She's been to countless auctions surrounded by couples and families, making her acutely aware that she does not have the same safety net, fronting all of life's costs, including a mortgage on her own. Well, yes, that's why people tend to pair up and have relationships. The 36-year-old public servant earns more than 120000 a year. And even on her above average wage, she says her mortgage bro broker told her she can't have it all. Yes, exactly. Because you need two people earning that, particularly in Sydney, to be able to buy a house. Because that's what, or maybe even one and a half. And here's at 36 years old, she's, she's not a young chicken anymore, guys. She, she'll be, you know, past uh, the years when you, you know, pair off. You know, early 20s, mid-20s. Yeah, that's when you pair off, find a partner, and build a life together. In some ways, it's a lot better starting young because hopefully, usually, you both have nothing, so you can build it up. It gets harder the older you get because you, you people are established, so they're a bit more wary about others coming in and usurping all of their, their wealth and their property. and It's just reality. I think the reality is young single people have got to make a choice between where they live how they spend their money, and what other things they want from life. Now, he, she's not young. 36, no offense. Okay, I'm, I'm in my 40s. 36 isn't young. 26, you could call yourself young. 36 is, to be brutally honest, not that far from being perimenopausal. You're not young anymore at 36. 36, you need to have, hopefully, settled down, maybe even established family. The problem is so many people are putting off starting a family because they're going to uni, they're doing this, they want to live their life experiences, and then the window to do any of these things, which are very fulfilling, disappears. I think a lot of women have been lied to, to be quite honest. Particularly all the, remember, what was it all, those big companies were paying for freezing of the eggs and all, and just the risk associated with that. It's not guaranteed. Nothing's guaranteed. So, and if it's a house, great. Uh, you can think that. But if travel is important to you or starting a family is important to you on your own, then you can't have it all. Well, okay. I would argue that starting a family on your own is not a good idea because kids are, let's just say, 
they require a lot of energy and it's natural to have two people to tag team. It's always a less optimal solution when only one person starts a family. And I mean, the reality is, or has, one person is raising kids and reality is that happens. Life is complicated, shit happens. You don't want to, you want to kind of get off on the best foot. You don't want to hamper yourself, you know. This is like hard mode. He told me you've got to pick one and that's pretty tough. I mean, at 30, 36 years old, how can you be at 36 years old and not be told you could only pick one? Is this the difference? Is this, ladies, let me know. Is this the difference between the sexes coming through here? Because it seems like obvious stuff. It's a choice that's become even harder on Tuesday with the Reserve Bank. Oh, you, you cannot blame the Reserve Bank for this. Raising rates from 4 point to, uh, to 4.35, you know, 25 points. That has no consequence. These are lifelong decisions this young ladies, or sorry, middle-aged ladies made. Come on. The decision was a blow to mortgage holders whose mortgage repayments on the average 590 grand mortgage have increased by roughly $1,340. $5 a month since last April, according to Finder. Yes, we've seen that again and again and again. I mean, that's a bullshit statistic. It sounds, it's real. Don't get me wrong, it's real. But we're coming off the lowest cash rate any of us have ever, or cash rate target any of us have ever seen in our lives. It's never been this low before. And I would argue it won't be this low again. And someone asked in the comments why I could make that call. It's because I'm hoping... I'm hoping that they've learned from their mistakes. I'm hoping. I'm, sh I'm sure they have. For those such as Jess, the dream of buying her first home is further out of reach. I mean, she's 36. A 30-year 30, uh, 30 loan is going to take her till 66 to pay. You'd need to get something cheaper and something smaller. I mean, single people can do it, but they... Oh, we got one viewer who, who shared her story of building a home. She went out... Far north, cheap land, got it built, small, efficient design, smart way to do it. But you're not going to be the median Sydney house, are you? Record high interest rates have reduced her borrowing capacity by roughly 150000 in the last 12 months as house prices soared, forcing her to put her dream of home ownership on the back burner. So it's still possible to buy a home on your own in Australia. Really? I, I guess it is, but it depends on what your costs are. So, how much do you have to earn to buy a home? Data released by Finder following Tuesday's cash rate hike estimates Australians need a minimum of 182,000 income to afford the average home nationwide. Yes, because they're comparing households to individuals. We don't have... It, it's not the 70s anymore. It's not the 50s anymore. It's not the 60s anymore, guys. It's 2020s, okay? You're both expected to work. Both of you are expected to bear the burden of that loan. That's reality. You don't like it? Well, it's been like this for a long time. I mean, there you go. Sydney is 1.3 million. Melbourne's 870. Brisbane, 790 grand. So you need an income of 155. I mean, Brisbane has just gone nuts in the last few years. Even if these prices, even if we lose 20% of these prices, we're still going to have insane property prices compared to 2019 levels got another article i want to go through we'll probably look at it tomorrow about arrears rates they've they've jumped they've spiked so the media's going to play it up you'll see the fear still not at pre-covid levels still still not at 2019 levels canberra 100 and, oh sorry 950 grand hobart 685 i remember when hobart was cheap you get stuff under under 300 under 200 adelaide 710,000 bucks perth and Darwin, both 190. Or maybe, I mean, WA, you could still get some good deals there. Okay, Sydney siders need an income of 261000 to service their mortgage. Yes, households. It's good to see they're talking about a household income here. Melburnians, 171. Perth and Darwin, 116. See, that's reasonable. You could probably get, you could, particularly if you've got a good professional qualification. You should be able to bring in 120 grand so you could run a household on that in Perth or Darwin, hopefully. So, who can afford to buy a home? 
The September report by property analysis group PropTrack painted an equally grim picture for Australians hoping, hoping to own their first home. Prop, PropTrack senior economist Angus Moore told SBS News that challenges around housing affordability were the worst they've been in three decades. It's not going to get better. It, I've, I've just become cynical about all the politicians wanting to address housing affordability. It's all just piecemeal bullshit. Look at the population growth that we have. They're not going to reach their housing target. It's just getting more and more onerous to build. The rules and regulations are increasing all the time. I was talking to an architect who quit the profession, went and became a PM, just frustrated at all the burdens that are placed and all the legislation you've got to keep up with. And that's adding to costs. You know, What sounds great in a soundbite, what people think will have an environmental benefit, is going to drive up the costs. Now, what do you want? Do you want cheaper houses, easier to build, or do you want the fuel goods? Because the Australians don't want cheaper houses. Okay, I don't care what you say. The reality is they're voting for more expensive housing. No matter your income, you'll never be able to afford to buy so few homes, Moore said. He said someone earning a median income of 105000 can only afford 13% of homes sold across the country, which is the lowest level since records began in 1995. I bet it was worse in the past. Low-income households on 64000 a year can only afford just 3% of homes. Yes, Australia is changing. We don't want to use housing as a vehicle for people to better their lives anymore. I mean, you can't even wire up your own house anymore. I've got the old owner-builders books, and we look back at some of the houses, the kid homes people would buy and build. It'd be like three beds with a separate toilet and bath, nothing else. And people would build them. No chance. I think this that kind of highlights just how tough it is to afford homes at the moment and how stretched affordability is as a result of the rapid increase in interest rates that we've seen. I mean, well, no, I would say that the the increase in ability for people to buy houses was artificially stimulated by an insanely so in, insanely low interest rate target. We're just returning to normal now. This It's not going to change, guys. Okay, don't don't kid yourself to think it's going to change. The shared equity scheme from Labor isn't going to change. It isn't going to make housing more affordable. All the federal government can do is throw more money at it. You've got not in my backyard crowd uh, um, poo-pooing every single development. Home prices have remained remarkably resilient and are up 4.9% nationwide despite high interest rates. Sydney is up 7.5% and Perth is up 10%. People are not going to sell their homes. It's such a pain in the ass to get into the housing market. I I was talking to a friend yesterday. We were just talking about property in the south southeast Queensland area, and I'm going, look look at the population growth predictions in the southeast Queensland regional plan. Never sell any property. Just keep it in the family. Pass it down. Don't sell it. Don't sell it. You'd be insane to because they're not going to make any more land. The land that's coming online is not going to be enough. Moore said, given that interest rates, these results were surprisingly strong. While household prices grew, people's borrowing capacity had shrunk. The ten, uh, sorry, the eleven cash rate hikes since May 22 have smashed the borrowing capacity by 30 percent in 24 months, with wages growth struggling to offset the increase in rates. Well, maybe interest rates don't have as much an impact on people's ability to buy. Maybe investors we'll have to look at the statistics. Maybe investors are swooping in, or maybe just that we've got a growing class divide here in Australia. You've got people that can afford to buy, so they'll increase their holdings. Because it's... We had a once in a hundred year event. What happened to property? We had a blip of it coming down and people flooded in like like it was crazy, like mania. And government did everything they could to juice it up. And now we've got a new government, same thing. Can you blame people? So th- think of it like this. Think of the taxi industry. Okay, how it was uh, a well limited market due to government interventions in the market. The only thing that broke it and de- significantly destroyed the value of those assets, the plates, 
was an uh, uh, external party coming in and breaking the laws, and the government didn't step in to enforce those. So that destroyed that that duopoly, pretty much, depending on where you were. You know, two taxi companies had a region, that type of thing. But that was all artificial because of the government. So you had these inflated prices in that sector. How can you see that happening in housing? The people who are predicting 50% falls. Interest rates going up is not going to have that similar impact. The government is going to do everything they can, and they use housing and property to stimulate the economy. That's a tool they use. So... How do first-term buyers um, enter the housing market? ANU Associate Professor Ben Phillips said, the last 12 to 18 months have been particularly challenging for first-home buyers. It remains a pretty challenging equation for young people and particularly young single people. Yes, well, the person is, in this article isn't a young single person. Okay, I mean, when you're 40, when you're approaching 40, when you're in your mid-30s, head into 40, we can't say we're young anymore. We go on a different checkbox. Just, you got to deal with it. Okay, by the, you know, 36, you, we were married with kids. He said another issue was the deposit gap, but that if people were able to get the funds together or have backing from their family for a deposit, then there are some options. For some people, it may be about lowering expectations. You could move further out or you could purchase a smaller unit. What about moving to a different city? I mean, how many people are struggling to get into Sydney when they could easily afford to live in Brisbane? You know, a bit further out in the suburbs, better weather, smarter, more attractive people. Yeah. It's a win-win. I, I'm saying this as it's raining <laughs> outside, bucketing down. It's, that's why I ran here without a Steiner coffee because I'm protecting myself from the rain. If you're in Melbourne or Sydney, useful advice is not to go over the top in terms of what you spend, but go down the property data. I think it's a sound investment if you can afford to do that. While wages growth is slow, or is slowly offsetting some of the interest rate increases, ultimately more said Australians, Australia needed to build more homes. Yeah, well, that's the reality of it, but it's not going to happen like to any extent that people want. The th uh, there are things that we can do, and in particular, we just need to build more homes that people want to live in. I would suggest allowing all these young people to access their superannuation. At 36 years old, she should have more than enough in her super to use as a deposit for a house. Previous generations didn't have that. They weren't forced to lock their money away into superannuation. They could just stack it up to build a fat deposit and then decimate their home loan and then then save up. But no, no, we're, we're too much of a bloody nanny state here in this country. We're not allowed to do that stuff. The reason that homes are very expensive in Australia is there aren't as many as people would like, and it's very hard to find a home. And so the on, only sustainable long-term solution to affordable housing is to build more homes where people want to live. So let's uh, have a chat about this one, guys. So what do you reckon? What do you think? Am I, am I too harsh and old-fashioned with my opinions that, you know, you kind of want to get together in your 20s so you can build a life together? That's kind of normal. And 36, is that's not young anymore, is it? Or can I, you know, I'm in my 40s. Can I consider myself young? Perhaps, perhaps it's just the... You don't really feel old until you've got kids calling you old. <laughs> wow, you're so old. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I mean, this is more of the same. People not facing reality. We saw that yesterday with the family that saying no to their children was like a new thing to them because they hadn't had to make those sacrifices because just times have been too good here. You can just go with the flow. Reality is going to settle in. A lot of people are going to learn some valuable lessons. It's not going to be the complete collapse of our economy that people are hoping. Housing is not going to crash down 50%. People won't need to sell. You may have some people... Well, look at it. Say all the people that got that 
2% government home loan. Yeah, they were single parents. What if they were all forced to sell around the country? Do you think 10 million properties sold under... Dist- oh, sorry. Do you think 10,000 properties out of the 10 million would make any difference? And I guarantee you, they will not all be selling in distress. I, th- I bet you a lot of them will have no problem at all. They'll bloody well manage and do what they can. But remember, the media will only play up the sob stories because, well, it gets the eyeballs. I'm looking at it. I'm interested. What do you reckon, guys? Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Take care, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>